How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning Game Maker Studio 2. In this, we're starting the RPG series. We're still going to jump back to uh, the other one as well from now and then, uh, from time to time now and then. We'll jump back to the other one, which is like the simulation game, uh, Driftbot, um, to do the audio and polish up some things. But basically moving on uh, to a new project, the RPG project. This one is pretty cool. So far, it's just bare bones, but I'm going to break it down, like I said, in the long rant. I'm going to do short tutorials. So in this tutorial, um, I'm going to show you how to do, to set up the buttons for your RPG system. So this is going to be very simple. We're going to keep it very short for these tutorials, like I said. So here is our button. We've got an attack button, and we've got another button, like a spell button or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But basically, to simplify this tutorial, all we're going to be learning how to do is make the button, make it interactable with the mouse, or you could use a keyboard as well and make it so that when it's selected uh, it highlights it changes its opacity and possibly plays particle effects so when we select a skill we can click on um, the enemy to issue the damage of that skill but then the enemy's turn goes it plays an, an attack back now this one isn't going to issue damage it doesn't really do anything but this one if we select it and we attack then you can see we've hit the enemy with damage um, I need to design the particle effect that plays all the enemy and stuff and sound effects. Lots of stuff to do, but we're going to keep it simple, right? Just the buttons. And if we uh, click on the button and then click on the enemy, it attacks. The enemy hits us back. There's no way for the player to die at this point, but we would have died already because we tried to use this, uh, this one, which did nothing. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it. We're making selectable buttons. Very, very short tutorial. So let's take a look at how we're going to do something like that. <clears throat> so right off the bat, you want to make your buttons. Go to sprites, create new and you know whatever size of button you want 64 by 64 32 by 32 16 by 16 128 by 128 whatever you feel like go ahead and make that and then double click on this um oh i should probably walk through the steps so if you wanted to um change the size you click on this button and you can change the size right here just hit apply and you could scale it in pixels to to get a good estimate anyway you can click on the plus to add another frame to it if you want to can double click on it to to check it all out we're going to press control c and we can press control v and copy paste that if we want to to add more frames so control c control v v v v we can also press control z to undo whatever changes we've made we can press the x to get rid of a frame we can right click and copy and right click and paste if we want to do it with a mouse uh, also we can delete frame just like that all kinds of stuff you can click the play button and then animate it further if you want to like say i wanted to put like some orange in it and say this size and like this and we can go like and now we've got like this brown goopy crap inside of our button animating so anyway we've got our button created call it s underscore button or whatever you feel like s underscore attack then we're going to create an object so under object right click create a new object call it o underscore button or or, or o underscore attack or something like that and uh, i'll show you two different buttons this one's uh Kind of a simplified one so this one um, right off the bat we're we're going to create three events a create event a step event and a mouse left pressed event um, so first thing we do is assign it a sprite so we click on that three three dots and we give it the sprite we created uh, we make sure that it's visible and then we add three events add a create a step and a left press on the create we're going to create a, a variable called selected and every button is going to have its own variable of, cre of selected to let us know if it's being selected or not so if it's being selected um, then we'll do stuff on the step to check every frame. But the create happens one, one time when the object is created. So we're setting it to be not selected by default. We're setting its image speed to zero, um, which is mean uh, it's not going to be animating. So it's not, it's not selected. It's not animating. We're setting its image alpha to 0.5, which means it's going to be halfway see-through. So it's going to kind of be opaque. Uh, it's going to have half opacity or whatever. <clears throat> this doesn't even need to be in here right now because we're not changing the size of it. But you can, if you want to, image underscore x scale equals whatever. One is full size. You know, it would be 64 by 64. You can magnify the thing by going two, and now it'll be 128 by 128. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, image underscore y scale equals image underscore x scale um, means whatever I change the x scale to, the y scale will match it so that it looks like a circle. Uh, image blend mode. I don't really think you need to mess around with this, but this is just some code that was in the help file to assign the blend mode to be a random color of hue, saturation, and value. And I wanted to see if it made an effect on it, but it didn't really seem to do anything, so I don't know. Maybe it needs to be used differently. 
So anyway, here's the, the logic behind it. So on the step, which is every frame of the game, it's checking if selected variable is true, which is not by default, it's set by false, so it won't meet this, then we're going to open a bracket and say image alpha equals one. So if we're selecting it, we want it to be fully visible. Also, image underscore speed equals one. So we want it to be fully visible and we want it to animate as long as it's selected. But we're going to do an else if, so we close off the brackets there, else if, if it's not selected, which means if selected equals 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 false, um, image equals alpha, image underscore alpha equals 0.5, so basically the same as where it was started at, um, and image speed equals zero, same thing as where it starts at. So um, if we left click on it, the next thing we're going to look at is left click, is we're, it's the same logic, if selected, else if, not, if not selected, um, but it's backwards, so you could you could repeat this the same if you want to keep the logic the same. So if selected, if not selected, we switch this to false and we switch this to true. The same logic applies. It doesn't matter which way you do it. So if it's selected, then we're going to, uh, and we left click on it, then we're going to, um, if we left press on it while it's selected, it will unselect it. It will set selected to false. But if we left click on it while it's not selected, it will set it to true and be selected, therefore turning this on. And that's basically it. That's all there is to it, really. To move on to the next uh, tutorial thing, what we're going to be doing is looking at attack and how I set it up with a battle manager. Um, so the battle manager is handling uh, a lot of things, right? And we'll touch on that in the next episode or something. Um, but we're, I'm using a battle manager and the buttons to cross-reference data to uh, determine when animations are being played and, and stuff like that. So... Same thing, a create, a, a step, and a left press. Uh, on the create, all we're setting is the selected. We're saying we're not selected from default. Uh, on the step, we're going to say if it's selected, image alpha is 1. Also, p underscore item pickup, which is a, a script I made, which is just calling uh, a play uh, play part particles, or play animation, what is it? Part particles create. That's all it is. It's just calling a, a, a script that's doing part particles create uh, right there. So... Not on Battle Manager. This right here is just part particles create. That's what I'm doing right there. Otherwise, image alpha equals 0.5. So if we're selected, um, then show full opacity and play an animation on it. And this is going to keep happening for each frame because it's step. So it's going to keep playing that animation. Uh, otherwise, image alpha to 0.5 and no animation. So oh, this doesn't need to be here. This was something else I'm messing around with, mouse collision and stuff. Um, and then on the left press, we'd, this isn't even in this tutorial. I'm just going to show it to you. It's how it's communicating with the battle manager. So um, <clears throat> if we're if we're uh, if we left press it, then uh, battle manager display actions. And uh, if if that is true, if the dis display actions is on, then set the skill number to one and set the action selected to true. And then if selected, selected is true. Else if selected, selected is false. So. It won't let you select attack if it's not your turn. So I had to do it this way. That way the player couldn't attack multiple times super fast before the enemy has a chance to, re to retaliate. Theoretically, that's not going to happen unless you make a macro. But just logically, it makes more sense this way. You go. It's not your turn to go again until the enemy goes. This is a turn-based system. So as soon as you go, the enemy is going to go back no matter what. You're not going to be able to click twice and, you know, before they're going to be able to hit you back. And that's the way it's set up. But anyway, that's it for a very uh, short tutorial on how to set up buttons. Um, I changed it up a little bit. Uh, it should have worked the same. And double check that it still works. So we've got this button. Oh yeah, we did change it up so that uh, I changed the X scale to uh, 2 instead of 1, right? It's a 64 by 64. Um, and you can see the difference, right? This is a 128 by 128. Look at the circle. This is a 64 by 64 that's been upscaled to 2 image scale image underscore x scale equals two also image underscore y scale equals image underscore x scale that's why it's it's matched out doesn't stretch out like lopsided or something this one is animating uh in image index equals uh i'm sorry image underscore speed equals true or one uh then it'll animate and uh this is image underscore speed equals zero it won't animate this one it's not animating at all instead it's playing a part uh it's it's doing a particle effect part particles create i think is and that's basically it 
there still needs to be more logic set up to where it doesn't do that when I have it deselected. So I've still got to fix this so that it... But in this tutorial, for just the buttons, that's basically all you need to do for the buttons is selected. Now you've got some selected selectable buttons and some triggers that you can use to, to mess with those buttons. Boom. 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 And we killed him, but we're of course out of energy as well. And now he's gone, so there's nothing to select. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned for more tutorials coming up. Um, thank you guys so much for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. I love you guys so much. Uh, please like this video if you did like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I've got RPG Maker MV tutorials, first impression videos. Uh, I played old school RPGs, new games that are in early access. Um, I do RPG Maker tutorials, first impression videos, beta testing, quality assurance, whatever I can do, whatever uh, I can try to make money on as well. Um, if you guys have any requests, let me know in the comments below, any special requests, I'd love to hear them. Also, hit me up in the Discord if you need any more help. I've got about 100 or so people on usually just hanging out, and a lot of people are super smart and very helpful, so if you want a bunch of people to help you with your projects, whether it's Game Maker Studio 2 or RPG Maker or whatever, you know, just even JavaScript stuff or just anything, uh, come hang out. Uh, link to the Discord is in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.